scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Say, I was born for a reason. You will think what I'm saying is very simple until um, I begin to unveil certain things for you in the course of this discussion. Say it again. I was born for a reason. One more time, let the devil hear you. Let the altar wanting to fight you hear you. Now, it is dangerous if you were not born for a reason. I was born for a reason. That means I refuse to die just like that. I was born for a reason. Are we together? And then... It's important for you to know that you have a destiny. You have a destiny even in Christ. Facts about destiny. I want to give you three very powerful facts. That there are many, many facts to know about destiny. But I handpicked three that are very important for our discussion tonight. It is not enough to just know um, generally about destiny. You have to understand that there are a few facts these truths represent the foundations for actualizing destiny. Number one, every man was born for a reason. Every man. This is, this is the, the first fact about destiny you have to understand. Every man was born for a reason. Write this down, please. Still under that point. Your purpose for existence represents the solution you were sent to bring to our world. Your purpose for existence represents the solution the solution you were brought to bring or give to humanity. So every man was born for a reason. Your purpose for existence is the solution you were born or brought to bring very very powerful every man is born for a reason every man is born for a reason you have to know this fact Romans chapter 8 and verse 30 Romans chapter 8 and verse 30 the Bible says moreover whom he did predestinate is it in your bible them he also called and whom he called he also justified and whom he justified he also glorified one more time prophesy i was born for a reason john chapter 18 please from 37 and 38 john chapter 18 pilate this was jesus before pontius pilate Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world. That means I didn't just leave heaven to come and roam around the earth. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world. That I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. 38. Next verse now. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? 
And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said, I find no fault in him at all. The moment the issue of purpose and destiny came, there was no basis for accusation. For as long as this man was in purpose, he could not find anything against him. For this cause I came. This is the reason why I was born. So fact number one, every man, every man is born for a reason. Your purpose for existence represents your solution that God brought you to give to your world. Fact number two, please. This is very important. Your destiny has been predetermined by God, but it takes your choices and decisions to actualize it or miss out on it. I will take it again. Your destiny has been predetermined by God. It's a very important fact to know that your destiny has been predetermined by God but it takes your choices and your decisions to actualize it or to miss out in it. Your destiny has been predetermined by God but it takes your choices and your decisions to actualize it that means to come into the experience of it or to miss out on it this is very powerful deuteronomy chapter 30 we'll start from verse 15 deuteronomy chapter 13 the verse of emphasis is verse 19 but let's start from verse 15 see i have said before thee this day life and good death and evil next verse in that I commanded this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his tattles and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and that the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. 17. But if thy heart shall turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Next verse. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go and possess it. Let's read verse 19 together. Ready? One to read. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, uh -huh, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live is that in your bible so it is true that your destiny has been preordained predetermined by god but it will take your choices and your decisions to determine whether you will come into the experience of it or you will lose out on it this is a very powerful fact about destiny to learn because there are many people who think just being aware that you have a glorious destiny automatically means you will step into it. Fact number three. Very sad but very true. Destiny can be aborted. Fact number three. Destiny can be aborted. You can lose out on, in destiny. It is very possible that you can lose out. We are not talking of delay. We are not talking of distraction. It is very possible that you will not leave out the script of your destiny. Acts chapter 1, please. Very quickly from verse 15. Acts chapter 1 from verse 15. And in those days... Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of all of them together were 120. Uh-huh. Next verse. Men and brethren, he said, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before, concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. 17. For he was numbered with us and have obtained part 
of this ministry is it in your bible he was numbered with us and did what obtain parts that means a portion of impact was given to him 18 now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity say choices say decisions and falling headlong he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out next verse and it was known to all the dwellers at Jerusalem in so much that the field is called in the proper tongue Akeldema, which is to say the field of blood. 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and let his bishopric let another take. Keep that scripture there. Was anybody's name mentioned there? somebody used the power of choices and decisions to activate that prophecy there was no name of judas written there but somebody used the power of choices and decisions to attract a prophetic word that david said without even knowing what he said it is written 21 wherefore of these men which have companied with us all the time and all of this and that 22 beginning from the baptism of john unto that same day as he was taken to heaven must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection next verse it says and they appointed two called barsabas joseph called barsabas who was son named justus and matthias 24 now and they prayed and said thou O lord which knowest the heart of men show us which of these two we're reading to 26 next verse that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which judas by transgression fell by transgression not preordination he's losing out on the ministry was not preordination he used the power of his choices to destroy the potential to be called apostle judas only god knows what else would have learned about god from his apostleship are we together last verse 26 now it says and they gave forth their lots and the lord fell on matthias and he was numbered with the 11 apostles question do you see there that Matthias, Matthias was not out of the 12 people Jesus chose. He did not choose Matthias to be the 12. Is that true? Yes. But the people came and said, because someone has created a vacuum in destiny, we must pray and say, Lord, we cannot allow this vacuum be like that. Let someone fill that vacuum. May nobody replace you in the name of Jesus Christ. The position and the place that God has earmarked for you. I'm saying it again. May God not wait and wait and wait and wait and find out that that vacuum is there, destroying others, other people's destinies, wasting that God will have to take someone and replace you. I rebuke that thing from your life in Jesus' name. Nobody will take your bishopric. In the name of Jesus. Can I tell you the truth? There are people on earth today that the assignment they are living today is not the original script for them. They were so faithful in their own, God still added the assignment of unfaithful people and multiplied grace upon their lives. It is true that a man can start, this is the course of destiny that God prepares for you. But because of the unfaithfulness and unseriousness of another person, do you know that if you do not live out purpose and destiny, everybody whose destiny was connected to you will also have to wait. And God will not punish innocent people because of your refusal to rise. So God will have to look for a willing vessel. And where there is no willing vessel, he will find somebody who is already walking and say, can I trust you and give you a greater anointing and still measure a thousand cubits for you? 
Because in these end times, you will see people who are serving tables later become evangelists. And you are wondering what happened. What is the relationship between welfare and the crusade ground? The person was doing his assignment in welfare very well. But the person who should be in that crusade ground was wasting his time. And God said, I cannot delay. I can't punish people like this. I can't allow souls to be dying. Whereas the person with that mantle is not rising. You will see an ordinary person working in the welfare department just prophetically speaking carry an anointing that was not in the original script of his life every man was born for a reason fact number two your destiny is predetermined by god but it will take your choices and your decisions to enter into the experience of it or to miss out in it and sadly destiny can be aborted destiny can be aborted keys let me give you the keys now i'm going to give you six of them then i will teach on something very very powerful that i believe is an explanation to many people's seasons in destiny and then we'll pray if god is blessing you already say amen. amen before i continue i'd like you to lay your hands on your head and say lord i'm still available if for any reason something about my life is beginning to make you rethink your confidence about me i am asking oh god that i am still available by your mercy i am still available someone pray i am still available I am still available I am still available I still can be trusted for someone you may be praying and say Lord in spite of everything wasting my time and wasting my years I am still available may your mercy still give me a chance to life Lord if you're healing someone in this nation don't do it without me don't do it without me lord if you're lifting someone in this nation don't do it without me ah. don't do it without me lord if you're raising someone in this nation don't do it without me is someone still praying one minute you are laying your hands on your head and say father nothing will take my place in life i will not stand to watch another person fulfill my assignment because of unfaithfulness because of carelessness I intend to fulfill that which is in the volume of the book for me. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, please sit down and write. Lend your destiny, your attention now. I want to give you six keys. Really, about seven. Number one. Are you ready? The first key. If you want to fulfill your glorious destiny in Christ. The first non-negotiable key. Is discovery. You have to discover and find your place. You must find your place and you must be very aware of God's prophetic blueprint for your life. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. Let's walk with a few scriptures. Media, let's walk together. Hebrews 10, 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will, O God. So where do you find where it was written concerning you? In the volume of the book. Apostle, where do I find it? It is written concerning you in the volume of the book. 
if you throw away the book you've thrown away the revelation of your destiny too you throw away the book you throw away the revelation of your destiny where do we find our destinies in Christ it is in the volume of the book are we together very powerful Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2 Proverbs 25 and verse 2 let's read it together very powerful scripture ready one to read it is the glory of God to conceal a thing but the honor of kings to search out a matter everybody say search out mm, that it is the glory of God to conceal a thing but the honor of kings to search it out how do I find my destiny search it out you search it out with scripture This is very powerful there are three principal channels as revealed from scripture that reveal our place of destiny and purpose in life there are many but three principles number one the word of God like I said the volume of the book the word of God number two your abilities and your giftings please write it down your abilities and your giftings are pointers to your purpose and point us to your destiny your abilities and your giftings and can I be sincere with you every time you do not connect your gift and your ability to purpose Satan is going to use it everybody you see who Satan is using mightily it is God's gift in that person Satan is using it's not like Satan gave the person the gift Satan found a very effective tool in the life of that person but not connected to purpose generally speaking you see anything that is not connected to purpose does not have value in itself the value of anything is with respect to its connection to purpose and destiny so just obtaining things and not connecting them to purpose will only be acquisitions that will lead to futility it must be connected to purpose is someone learning you find your place in destiny number one from the Word of God you find your place in destiny number two by examining your abilities and your giftings there's something God has put from within your spirit that should be used David your ability to sling and to throw the sling with uncanny mastery is not just a a hobby uh -uh. the the courage is giving you to be able to tear the lion and the bear it's not for nothing your music acumen the ability to be able to sing keep it because one day you will write psalms and hymns and even spiritual songs listen you must make a commitment tonight that everything God has put within me I must identify it it is amazing how that so many people have not taken the time to carefully and gratefully search out the many valuable abilities and giftings that God has put within their spirit anytime you do not discover your giftings and the things that are valuable within you you know what Satan would do he would make you feel less of yourself and you will begin to admire people that you do not even have who do not even have the the components of value that is within you there is nobody who does not have an ability from god hallelujah is someone learning very powerful one of our one of our little ones came the other time I think I was teaching in school of ministry and something very interesting happened the young lady came to me and she came and tapped me and said that they were listening to my message and she told my she told her mother that apostle is not pronouncing purpose well that is purpose not purpose I was watching the girl I said oh dear you see now my mind i said all right so may god raise her to become a public speaker or become a woman of god i mean she's already there if at that age so she came and she was trying to she was trying to correct me to let me know that this is how they pronounce it properly i said ah these are the people who went to school now <laughs> are we together let me tell you where most of you buried your giftings it came because of the tragedy of your foundation 
did you hear what i said the tragedy of an inaccurate foundation some of the giftings that were finding expression it was the holy spirit revealing them to let those around us know that this noise making ability is not just talkativeness there is something in it it's been mismanaged but this is a baby revealing something there were children with different abilities that if parents had the discernment to identify did you know that is the awareness of these giftings that should help the parents direct the children eventually on what they should study or become unfortunately many people buried their gifts to be able to honor the desire of parents and i'm saying this respectfully so there are people who are wallowing in destiny with certificates and degrees and several qualifications and there is nothing in it that is related to purpose and destiny some of the people you see that excel even academically in many cases those people found themselves either by favor or just pure luck practicing and studying things that are in sync with the abilities that are within them so it's like a fish swimming in water but there are people who are beds but they've suffocated you in water and say you must stay there some of you the pain of your childhood some of you all kinds of things that have happened to you poverty suffering has buried away potentials but in the name of jesus if lazarus could come forth i speak to that dormant gift i speak to that ability that man of god that prophetess that entrepreneur that leader joseph that king that queen in the name of jesus you must come back to life now you must come back to life now Please sit down. Only God knows how many authors are dead within you who should write books that will mentor nations. Only God knows how many people, potentials locked up. Some of us, because of our backgrounds, someone, some person, somewhere, even if well intentioned, continue to minister to you that you do not have the power to become that which god has designed for you and you believed it some of us respectfully speaking the kinds of schools we went to and the teachers around us they use maybe your academic gradings and they began to call you names that made you to permanently bury your giftings can i tell you your giftings and your abilities a gentleman last week i think he was and i've received so many i don't know how many of my photos they do portraits they do all kinds of things with my photos and and i'm so grateful for the people who are thoughtful to have done that and a gentleman he came in i think from kaduna state i was just praying for people here and then this guy i think it's almost the size of this 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 uh, pulpit very beautiful he he drew it with his hand and i mean you it's it's about it should be it should be arguably one of the best portraits of myself that i've seen and yet this guy just presented it to me and i said my god and there are many 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 people who will pay millions of naira to someone if they can find a person who does this but you will be surprised almost all the people within that person's family they just know that he's carelessly doing something do you know let me tell you africa we must wake up the 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 spirit that makes us to destroy great visions at infancy i cost that spirit in jesus name <laughs> hallelujah discovery so number one the word of god helps you to discover your place your purpose your destiny number two your abilities and your giftings inherent abilities write them down know them number three service one of the most powerful channels and platforms to find your place in destiny is service even service in the house of god there are many people today who may not really know what it is that is within them until service gives them an opportunity to reveal it is someone learning very very important 
Number two, let's hurry up. What is the second key if you want to actualize destiny? Are you ready? Determination. Don't downplay these keys you are receiving. Many have trivialized it to the detriment of their destinies. Determination. You must be determined to succeed. What is determination? Unbendedness in pursuit. That means I am not giving up until I see my destiny become what God showed me in that vision. You may weep, but please don't stop till you look just like him. You may cry, but please don't stop till your life looks like him. You may weep, but please don't stop till your life looks like him you may fall but please don't stop till you look just like him determination philippians chapter 3 please and verse 13 unbendedness in pursuit that means you have set your face like a flame 313 philippians brethren i count not myself to have apprehended he says but this one thing I do. You know people of purpose and destiny because at every point in their life there is the one thing they are doing. People who do too many things, they are not just busy bodies. Sometimes doing too many things is a revelation of purposelessness. This one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth Unto those things which are before. I love this. Next verse. It says, I press. This for me is a definition of determination. I press towards the mark. I press towards the mark. I press towards the mark. That means nothing will stop me. If God has said there is an entrepreneur, God has said there is a man of God, God has said there is a worship minister to sing his praises to the nations, then I press towards the mark. Can I tell you, determination requires courage because for the most part of your journey, you will be alone. Don't expect people to believe in you at the infancy of your vision and don't blame them if they don't believe in you. It is at the end the vision speaks. So for the most part of your journey to purpose and destiny, you will walk alone, but find comfort that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I fear no evil for thou, not for you people, for thou. There is just one person you need to verify. Is he here with me? Apostle, I'm unable to rise because nobody believes in me. You are not alone. Keep moving. Apostle, but I think people like you. When did they start liking me? You go and find out. There is nobody who they start liking and clapping for at the beginning. Every vision looks like a failure from the beginning. It takes determination. Your determination will force failure to become success. So don't think it is anything special happening to you. Apostle, this ministry is not working. Whose own do you think worked? People forced it to work. members don't come to my church <laughs> my brother you need to have determination by the spirit of god all this free lunch mentality is why we don't have champions in the kingdom a crave for sympathy and endorsement you must sustain the courage to walk alone but when you win i assure you you will not clap alone can i tell you this there are few people in life who will be around those who are starting they are called burden bearers and if you've read your bible they are not many that's why i told you to pray for them but i'm telling you you must trust the holy spirit as a chief burden bearer and be sure that if he's there fire on do you know what determination is if i perish i perish many of us have plan b plan c plan to plan z you will not be able to go forward that way. Winners are people who don't have plan B. Lord, I've set my hand on this floor and I will press. Determination. 
apostle but they are laughing at me most of the people who are laughing at you will be your strongest witnesses when you become great because they will say we saw it i don't like this man but i can tell you i saw him can i tell you this i'm praying tonight that God would take away this chicken heart of fear. Fear of what people will say. What will people say? Take that thing away and you need a lion's heart if you want to be great. Whether you are Jesus or Satan, people will talk. They talk about Jesus, they talk about Satan. Who are you that you, you are in between somewhere? Whether you backslide, whether you maintain your work, they will still talk about you. Listen, we live in a world that is so obsessed with, it's, it's important to preserve your integrity and all of that, but let me tell you the truth. Don't allow yourself to become a slave to people's opinion. What does God desire for my life? And you fire on. I know God has called me to be a man of God. And someone looks at you and says, now nah, for you, you preach a sermon and for the first time I slept in church. No problem. Let him mock you. Accept it as a positive challenge. Don't fight everybody. You accept it and move forward and say, no problem. After all, Peter too. They tried to pray for somebody and remember what happened? But the time came, his shadow. Everybody said determination. Can I tell you the truth? Get away from that theology that makes you believe that if God is with you, it is just free lunch all the way. Uh -uh. You've heard, it is a popular saying in the body of Christ and it's been so for many years, that faith does not just make things easy. The assignment of faith is to make things possible, not easy. Whether it is easy or not, provided it becomes possible, that is the assignment of faith. Everybody said determination. Now lay your hands on your head again. Don't be tired this night or you are praying. Father, I obtain grace. This fear factor. Oh God, take it out of my life. Give me the heart of a lion. In the name of Jesus. Who said you cannot build the house? In the name of Jesus. Who said you cannot move from a tenant to a landlord? In the name of Jesus. Who said it is in your destiny to suffer for the rest of your life? Who said you cannot rise to the highest peak in your career? Who said you cannot become a man of God with results? Don't let your lack of determination cooperate with naysayers. You need determination. Will you fail? Yes, sir. How many times? As many as your destiny will require. But you have to obtain grace. God is speaking to someone tonight. Shake off that limitation. Shake off the excuses. I obtain grace to be determined. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Go and ask any great man you know today, whether in the secular, whether in ministry, if they are honest enough and they don't want to lie or just flatter you, they will tell you, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Are we together? Many of us are too fearful to do anything significant. You've been in this Abuja. I know we're talking destiny, but let it adds up to all of these things. You've been in this Abuja 10 years, 20 years. You've not had the courage to go out and even go and look where a plot of land is. And you laugh at yourself and say, no, 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 no. Let me tell you, if you don't take that step of courage, I'm sorry to say it. I don't mean to insult you, but you will die a tenant. Believe me. It takes courage the signs follow they don't go before most of you who are waiting for things to walk there are times you have to close your eyes and walk on that water so what if you fall Jesus is there he would take responsibility for your obeying him everybody say determination there are many people who come to me for prayer and most times and lovingly speaking i look at these people and they expect some magic to happen just because apostle is praying no. many of you your dreams have been in notebooks for decades and you have left it there and to your shock you will watch somebody leaving it out and you'll be angry and say, ah, ah, is this not the thing because it's not only you that saw it 
when the spirit of revelation was distributing those things is first confess have ah, but i saw this business idea what did you do about it someone saw it and got up and said listen i don't have a father mother but i have the lord jesus and let's go determination let me tell you something believers and i we men of god must take responsibility for proposing that kind of message we have taught a there is a dimension of the teaching of faith and the ministry of the holy spirit that needs to be balanced when you are teaching people about achievement because of the excellency of the personality of the holy spirit and and the the how how powerful the law of faith is we make it look as if the moment you take a step and you are determined if you do fail it is because god is not with you let me tell you this even if an angel appears before you and says i have ordained you to be a real estate champion in abuja receive the grace you can fall down and roll under the anointing and get up and your first deal can be because there are many things you don't know your first deal can even be a scam and yet you go to god in prayer and god says i, I don't even know what you are talking about all i know is that what i said is still what i've said many believers have this superstitious belief that just because you fail people will come and say this business did you really hear god and you go back in shame and you go back in regret there is difference between failure as an event and failure as a person he says rejoice not over me my enemies it is true that jesus died but for how many days did he die don't talk about the dead jesus when he's already back to life Imagine that Jesus rose up from the grave and sat there inside the, inside the tomb and says, I'm angry because everybody ran away from me. You better come and carry me out of this place. I don't know how many days we would have been counting for redemption. As soon as he came back to life, he had no time. The Bible says he rolled the grave clothes and he had, he had what to do. He didn't see the disciples and say, you guys, three days I suffered, I was in that tomb alone. He had no time for that discussion. Let me tell you this. Determine people don't weep for too long. If they go through something, they can stand, learn from it, readjust, and fire on. Determine people are those that if one door closes, they force another door to open. Listen, don't just, don't just be excited for nothing. This is what it takes to be a champion in the kingdom determination apostle right now i'm in school i don't have a father i don't have a mother where will my school fees go from just read your book start from there read your book if you don't read and the school fees comes two weeks to the exam you will still fail even though the miracle has come do the part you can do and leave god to do what you cannot do god will not do what you can do I don't have the money to buy the land but do you know where the land is that one does not require money is God challenging you apostle I'm just waiting I don't know who will give me money oh let me build my church <laughs> who will give you money do you need money to fast? Do you need money to pray? Do you need money to call upon the name of the Lord? Do you need money to carry fire? Start from there. Leave the issue of bills. Start from there. Solve fire first. The fire problem. Then the bill problem will be solved. Number three. Is God speaking to someone? So that respectfully speaking some of this wrong understanding we have about destiny that just because you are in Christ you will just be a bed of roses is why many many believers are failures we pray in tongues but we still fail and let me tell you when you see somebody in a season of pain and failure don't be too quick to point hands and laugh at the person and say you didn't hear God even if the person did not hear God he honorably felt in that pain God will come in his mercy and visit the person 
Number three. Who is learning tonight? So the first is discovery. The second is determination. The third, are you ready? Go for knowledge. Get wisdom. You want to actualize destiny? Thank God for discovery. Thank God for the determination, the willingness to press in spite of. But you need knowledge. Destiny is knowledge driven. Destiny is knowledge driven. Oh, this is very important. This is very important. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Three scriptures quickly. Please give it to us. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ready? Please read. One to read. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no path to the city. It is painful to see your destiny and yet not know the requisite level of knowledge. Every result I have taught you in the kingdom, every pathway you need to take, there is a requisite level of knowledge, wisdom that it takes for you to actualize it. Now let me tell you the truth. It is in this area of accessing knowledge that men are separated from boys because knowledge is not a gift you buy the truth it will cost you we live in a world where we are obsessed with gift give it to me make it happen why don't you write all the points for my destiny and come and spoon feed me with it unfortunately it does not work like that everybody say buy the truth you must go for knowledge very very important proverbs chapter 24 please from verse 3 and 4 still on the third point go for knowledge get wisdom the bible says through wisdom please give us amplified i love the rendition of amplified of this very scripture proverbs 24 3 and 4 look up please it says through skillful and godly wisdom is a house a life a home a family built and by understanding it is established on a sound and a good foundation next verse through knowledge and by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches somebody say knowledge say understanding say wisdom the major the major activity during the preparatory phase of your destiny will be this right there getting wisdom getting knowledge your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you